A Brahmin came to see the Buddha one time. I asked him about the path of practice. And after the Buddha explained it, the Brahmin asked him, given that there is this path, will the whole world ever get an awakening, or only half, or a third? And the Buddha didn't answer. Venerable Ananda, who was sitting nearby, got upset, afraid that the Brahmin would be offended that the Buddha didn't answer an important question. So he pulled the Brahmin aside. He said, it's like a fortress. It's a wise gatekeeper. And the gatekeeper goes around the fortress. And aside from the one gate into the fortress, he doesn't see any hole by which anybody could get in, not even big enough for a cat to slip in. And he reflects. He doesn't know how many people are going to come in and out of the fortress, but he does know that all those who will come in and out of the fortress have to go in and out through the gate. In the same way, the Buddha doesn't make it his business to know how many people will be following the path. But he does know that all those who are going to go to total freedom will have to follow this path. There was another time when he was asked about his knowledge of the future. There were teachers at the time who believed in determinism, in other words, that the future was already determined by the past. And they would talk about events that would happen in the future with 100 percent certainty. And someone asked the Buddha what he knew about the future. Now the Buddha had many times talked about tendencies that there would be into the future. But as for his knowledge of the future, he said he knew that he was free from rebirth. That was it. And it has to do with the fact that he didn't teach determinism. In other words, what's going to happen is not totally determined by the past. In fact, what's going to happen right now is not totally determined by the past. The way he taught causality, the present moment is composed of three things. The results of past actions, current actions, in other words, your current intentions, and the results of current intentions. Without your current intentions, there wouldn't be an experience of the present. Your current intentions are that important. And they don't have to be shaped by the past. It's good to keep that point in mind, because all too often it's taught, the Buddha taught, that the present moment is shaped by the past and the present is going to shape the future. But if the present moment is already shaped by the past, that means the future is shaped as well. Everything is locked in. And as the Buddha said, if everything were locked in, there would be no path of practice. You couldn't make up your mind. You couldn't change your mind. Or if there was a change in your mind, it would have nothing to do with what you were doing, because it had already been determined from the past. That, the Buddha taught, was a pernicious doctrine. It was so bad that even though he wasn't the sort of person who would go out and pick fights with other people, would go search out teachers who taught that and say, you're leaving people unprotected. You're basically saying if they're going to kill, steal, cheat, it's already determined. There's nothing they can do not to do that. But as the Buddha said many times, the fact is that we can develop skillful qualities. We can change. In fact, that's what the Four Noble Truths are all about. Why are we suffering? We're suffering because of things we're doing. But we don't have to keep on doing the things we're doing. We can change. We can bring something new into the world. In fact, with every moment, we have that possibility. You can bring something new into the world, something unexpected. So why not make it unexpectedly good? All too often people don't take advantage of this possibility. They have old habits and they fall back on old habits. They have old ways of seeing the world, and they just fall back on those. But the Buddha is saying you can change, and he lays out the path to change. It's, it is the Eightfold Path, and it's a noble path. It lifts the level of the mind. 
So it's all laid out. And it's up to you to decide how you're going to bring something new into your life, something really good. Because there's no mysteries about the path. Everything is laid out very clearly. The one mystery is in this freedom that we have. Why do we have this freedom? The Buddha never explains. But he doesn't have to explain. He just, just basically take advantage of the fact that you have this ability. He said that he wouldn't have taught if people couldn't change their habits, if they couldn't develop skillful qualities and abandon unskillful qualities. It's because they can. That's why I taught. That's why we have the Dharma. So even though the Buddha wouldn't know whether or not we were going to follow the path, we can be the deciding factor. We can decide that we're going to change. So look into your mind. Wherever there's suffering in your life, it's coming from inside. Now many people will complain. They say, well, that's letting everybody else off the hook. Or they've got their suffering. And if your happiness had to depend on changing other people, getting them to be just the way you wanted them to, you're in the wrong world. You have to change yourself. That's what the Four Noble Truths are basically saying. And they're basically saying, this is how you do it. First look and understand where your suffering is. It's in the clinging, the things you're holding on to. Now the Buddha puts it in fairly abstract terms. There are feelings, form feelings, perceptions, thought fabrications, consciousness. Of those five, the fabrications covers the widest variety of things. It's the way you talk to yourself. It's the way you think. It's your emotions, your worldviews, your ideas of what you have to do, what you don't have to do, how other people should be, how other people should not be. There's an awful lot under fabrication. So you want to look into it. How are you fabricating the present moment? Because it's that intentional element in the fabrication that is your potential for freedom. But if you just keep on fabricating the same old garbage over and over and over again, you're not taking advantage of the fact that the Buddha has been born into the world, went through all that effort to find the teaching, went through all that effort to teach it after he found it. And there have been people in, from generation to generation for more than 2,600 years now who found that this teaching is really valuable and they've passed it on. It's like something that's been carefully handed from hand to hand to hand. And you don't want it to be the fact that it comes to you and you drop it, as long as you're holding the teaching, get the best out of it, get the most out of it, by realizing that with each breath you have the opportunity to bring something new into the world, a skillful thought, a skillful intention. Once there is a skillful intention, then you can continue it. That could be new, too, even though it's the same skillful intention as when you're doing concentration practice. The fact that you're continuing it, that's something good that can be brought into the world. And then you learn how to reflect on yourself so that you can make your concentration deeper. And you learn how to reflect on all your actions, because this is what Dharma practice is about. How are you going to learn something new unless you reflect? You look at what you do, what you get as a result, and you have to ask yourself, are the results really satisfactory? As long as there's suffering in the mind, no. There's something wrong with what you're doing. And there'll be part of the mind that says, I can't change. This is just the way I am. That's the part, that's defilement thinking. That's defilement speaking. You have to learn how to recognize that, because all too often that's what we identify with. We set ourselves up in opposition to the Dharma. 
And even though the Buddha is very kindly trying to say, here it is, here it is, this is the way out, we cross our arms and say, no. And that's the new thing we're bringing into the world. But the world already has an awful lot of that. If you can look at yourself and see, okay, this is what I'm doing that's causing, causing trouble. And ask yourself, how would be another way of doing that? The Buddha keeps pointing, here, 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 try this, try this. And so whatever it is, whatever the wall is in the mind that puts up resistance, you've got to learn how to tear that wall down. and open the opportunity for something genuinely new and genuinely good to come into the world in the present moment. And you always have the opportunity to do more of the same, the same. In other words, something new, something good, something new, something good, again and again and again. The opportunities keep coming. Just want to make sure that you don't throw them away. I guess it's not the case that you'll always have the chance to know the Dharma. You know it in this lifetime, but if you throw it away in this lifetime, you probably won't encounter it in the next. And there will come a point, as the Buddha said, even though he doesn't know exactly when. But as he said, he did know that there would come a point where his teachings would be forgotten. This has happened with all the Buddhas of the past. And then the world goes through long, fallow periods where those who find awakening have to do all the work themselves. But here we've got the teachings to help us. They point us into the mind, saying, right here, right here, this is the problem. So you have to look at why you resist, and why you want to identify with that resistance. Ask yourself, what do you gain? It's all loss. What little gain there is is not really worth it. This is what the Buddha has you reflect, and reflect comparing. What are the advantages? What, are the, what is the allure of the way you're doing things? What are the drawbacks? And when you realize the drawbacks are genuine and they're not necessary, you don't have to keep acting in unskillful ways. That's when you've got a chance. Make the most of that opening. The more you make advantage of that opening, the wider it grows, and the more it becomes habitual to bring something good into the world with every moment. Instead of the same old garbage you've been bringing into the world for who knows how long. We do have this chance to make a difference, to make a good difference. So make the most of it while you can. <laughs>